Hey everybody, I recently posted a video about smart home protocols and a few of you had some pushback for me. So I'm gonna to try to address that today. The pushback was whether or not I had any Bluetooth devices in my house. And I said, I didn't have any connected to my home assistant. And I got the pushback that you definitely have some in your house. So what we're gonna to do today is find out if I do. So how we're gonna do that is utilizing this ESP32. We're gonna hook it up with Home Assistant through the ESP Home integration. I'll show you how to do all that in this video. Welcome back to Josh's Smart Home. If you're new here, I wanna welcome you in and let you know that I've been building out my smart home for about 10 years now. And I wanna share with you what I've learned along the way to make your home smarter. So let's get to it. So what is the ESP32? It's this little microcontroller that's a low cost, low power device. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi directly on the board. So it can suit a lot of needs, but the Bluetooth is often overlooked. You probably seen these used in other projects, but today we're gonna try to utilize the Bluetooth directly on the device and see what we can connect to. So why are we going to use the ESP32? Well, first and foremost, these things are cheap. I'm gonna link it in the description below so you can check it out. I bought it off of Amazon. And these things are ultra reliable once you connect them with Home Assistant through ESP Home. Not to mention, you can place several of these because of the affordability throughout your house and get really good coverage, even if all your devices aren't in the same area and that gives you excellent range with the multiple instances throughout your home. Plus, you don't need a dongle for this, so you don't have to worry about if you have an extra drive, an extra port on your home assistant instance, you can just plug this in, connects through Wi-Fi, and it's local on your network. And finally, I'm told that these work really well with Home Assistant through the ESP Home integration, and it's super easy and a breeze, but we're gonna find that one out in just a few minutes. So what do we need for this project? We need the ESP32, we need a USB cord to connect this to power and connect it to the computer so we can flash this thing. We need Home Assistant with the ESP Home integration. I'll be installing that on mine in just a minute. And we need some Bluetooth devices. Do I have any? I don't know, we're gonna find out though. Okay, we're over in Home Assistant now. And the first thing we're gonna do is jump over to the settings. We're gonna go into the add-ons and then we're gonna add on ESP Home. All right, now that that's installed, I want to have it start on boot and turn on the watchdog to make sure we're taken care of. And at this point, we're going to start the add-on and we're going to open up the web UI. And at this point, we can click new device and we're going to do it through ESP Home Web. So I had to download Google Chrome, of course, to get this to work. And I'm going to hit connect on the website here and pick the USB serial option and hit connect. And then we're going to prepare it for the first use. So at this point, I'm going to hit install, and now we have to wait for it to install, and we get the configuration installed. And we can close that and connect to Wi-Fi, and this is where you enter your Wi-Fi information and hit connect. And just like that, it was provisioned and everything is good to go. And now we're going to flip back over to the ESP Home Device Builder, and we're going to open this up in the UI. And it says one device was found and we're going to configure it at this point. And the first thing we're going to do to configure it is take control and we're going to move through the options here. And at this point, the configuration was created and we're going to install on, on the device. And once that device is added in here, you can edit and you need to go into the YAML and we're gonna do a Bluetooth proxy. And then we want to do active, and in this case, it's going to be false. And what that means is a listen-only mode. So now is going to be basically the moment of truth. Let's get this thing installed. We're going to do wirelessly because I hear that's the easiest, and we're going to let it run its course here. And hopefully, when we move over to the integrations, everything will be good to go, but we'll see. All right, that took a little bit of time, but we are finished now. So we'll get out of this and we'll go back to our settings and go into our devices and services. And here you can see ESP32 primary. So let's try to add this guy in and see what happens. And we can pick an area. I'm just gonna randomly put the study 
and hit finish. I made a couple changes to the YAML. I added in the ESP32 BLE, which is the Bluetooth Low Energy, and I set a scan interval under the scan parameters of 10 seconds to balance out the scanning with the uh, need for having you know lower energy usage of the microcontroller here. You can see that we do have a couple of devices. We have an iBeacon tracker, and we can set that up. And we have an LED, so let's add this in. I'm actually not even sure what this device is. So I turned this on and it's red, so I'm gonna go find it. And I went ahead and changed it to like a light blue just to verify I had the right device. And I definitely found it. It was an LED strip that was in my son's room. So apparently that's Bluetooth. I don't have a whole lot of devices that showed up right away. So I don't think I have as much of a use yet for this, but definitely with the cost and the ease, I'm going to look into setting up additional. So I also want to think about how do I track maybe using Bluetooth? What does that look like around my house? So I think there's a lot of opportunities there. I was able to pull up Keychain Access on my Mac OS device, and this allowed me to open up the different devices under the iCloud when I searched Bluetooth and look for the public Mac address that matched the Bluetooth Mac address on my Apple Watch. And then once I did that, I was able to jump back over to Home Assistant, go to the iBeacon Tracker, hit the gear icon, and then enter the UUID and hit Submit. And it's able to track my device at that point. And it can tell me the estimated distance that is away from the uh, Bluetooth module, which is actually on the other floor of the house. So I can use this for tracking purposes. I have a lot of ideas here. So I think I'm going to end up buying more of these, putting them throughout the house and using different tracking information to determine what happens based on who's where, based on our Apple watches that we wear. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel because I do expect videos in the future regarding this topic. I know typically I like a set and forget type, you know, setup, but this one has a little bit more on the front end. But I think after you it configured it'll be pretty reliable and resilient and you won't have to fool with it after that so i think it's worth the front end effort on this one a few advanced tips and troubleshooting pointers first things first is i would either put one of these right in the center of your house to you know increase the probability of connecting to devices or have maybe one per room or one per area of your house to make sure you have full coverage with that Bluetooth. Also, some Bluetooth devices are going to conserve power, so you may have to activate those to get it to recognize it, because it might go to sleep to save the energy there, particularly, you know, the battery Bluetooth items. And not all devices are compatible with the Home Assistant ESP Home integration for the Bluetooth tracker, so you may have issues there as well. But if you're having issues, certainly, you know, enable the logs and check those out. That way you know exactly what's going on and how you can troubleshoot your smart home. So there you have it. The ESP32 paired with Home Assistant with ESP Home is superior to other integrations because you have the low cost, robust environment on the ESP32. Did I have a couple of issues setting it up? Of course I did, but this is my very first time. And as we continue, I'll look to get other devices set up so that I have more coverage in my house and can track things throughout my house and know exactly where they're at and connected to which you know ESP32 device. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps me out. And leave me a comment about what Bluetooth devices you'd like to connect into your home assistant smart home. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay smart, and I'll see you in the next one.